When Manchester United headed into that game against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, I said that Jose Mourinho had six games to prove himself as Manchester United manager. With the right results, I would still stand in support of him. With the wrong results, I felt it was inevitable he was going to be sacked. Now, regardless of the Juventus defeat at home and the humiliating Man City defeat away, I think Man United and Jose Mourinho did enough in those six games to fill me with a little bit of hope for the second half of this season. But Mourinho might just be about to face his toughest challenge as Manchester United manager so far, and he's faced plenty. But Man United, starting from Saturday, play 11 games in the next 37 days, starting with Crystal Palace at Old Trafford. It's the crazy, festive fixture pileup that happens every single year. And Manchester United have got a lot of games coming up. And inside those 11 games, there are a few standout tough fixtures. If you haven't seen the list of the games, here it is. Man United kick it off with Crystal Palace before facing Young Boys. And we need to win that after losing against Juventus in this first game at Old Trafford. Then we play Southampton away, then Arsenal at home, Fulham at home, Valencia away. That could be the decider of the Champions League and whether we go through to the Champions League knockouts or not. Then the biggest game of the season for Manchester United fans, Liverpool away, then Cardiff away, Huddersfield at home, followed by Bournemouth at home and kicking off the new year with Newcastle away. Whew. That's a lot of games for Manchester United to play in. For a, for a manager who rarely, really rotates his squad, it's going to be a very testing time for Mourinho. There's absolutely no way that Nemanja Matic can play 11 games in 37 days over the Christmas period. He can't do it. So Jose Mourinho is going to have to change his midfield. And I think the changes that were forced maybe upon Mourinho with the injuries to Lukaku, etc. that happened and then you saw Sanchez playing as a central striker in that period, in that six games, that might not have happened if Mourinho had all of his players available. But it happened. And Man United's style of football changed. And that change brought about the right results, the right performances, he saw Bournemouth, last-minute winner, Juve, last-minute winner, Newcastle, that wasn't when the system had changed, but last-minute winner. There were so many reasons to be positive, I feel, in the last couple of months at Manchester United. Plenty of reasons to be negative as well. Obviously, the Juventus game, humiliated, outdone by an elite-level opponent. Man City, the levels that were shown between the two clubs were really on show at the Etihad. 3-1 was probably a, a decent result for United on the day. It could have been five or six it really, really could have been. But they're in the past. And as I said, I still think United did enough in those games to fill me with a little bit of hope heading into this crazy fixture pileup. But it's going to be hard for Mourinho and half for United. And we head into this Crystal Palace game, for example, with no fewer than five or six injury concerns. Paul Pogba, Anthony Martial, Romelu Lukaku, Victor Lindelof, Marcus Rashford have all had injuries or illnesses during the international break. Unsure if any or all of them will be fit to face Crystal Palace. Luke Shaw is out suspended, but Diogo Delot has returned. That's a big boost. Maybe we're going to see him play. We probably will see him play with Luke Shaw out suspended. And it's, as I said, it's not just the amount of games that United are playing, which is going to be a testing time for Mourinho and his squad. It's the games that we're playing as well. And there's only one game you can start by looking at here, really. Liverpool away. December the 16th, Manchester United travels to Anfield. And for every United fan, when the fixture list comes out, Anfield away. That's the first game that all United fans look for. It's the most important game of the season so far. And let's be honest, Mourinho and United's performances under Mourinho at Anfield so far have been dead. Stalemate, flat, not much to say about it. Let's just move on. We can't have that against Liverpool on December the 16th. You know, take Louis van Gaal at Anfield. When Juan Mata scored two, that overhead kick, he used Anfield as his canvas on which to paint the perfect performance. And it was brilliant. And it was a magical day for United fans at Anfield. And that gave Louis van Gaal a bit of grace with United fans. Because you win at Anfield, United fans won't ever forget that. And if Mourinho can steer United just like he did, say with Chelsea when Liverpool were looking to win the Premier League and Chelsea went there and won a couple, was it 2-0? And Mourinho loved it. It's a performance that I want to see from Mourinho and Anfield this time around. And it's a performance I want to see from United, certainly. Because if we win that game, momentum is going to be massively behind us. But if we lose that game, it's an all-consuming defeat. A bit like the derby was against City. Lose that game 
and there's going to be just an intense amount of pressure on Jose Mourinho, regardless of what's happened in the games leading up to it. And then you've got Valencia away in the Champions League. Now, as long as Manchester United can beat young boys at home, we beat them comfortably away, so you should be saying, look, United are getting three points there. doesn't always turn out like that, and hopefully the players won't be complacent, but that is a match that United should be winning comfortably. Then you've got Valencia away. Now, after the defeat to Juventus at home and the draw against Valencia, it leaves this group right on the edge of qualification or getting knocked out of the group stage. And the game that's going to really change that is Valencia away. It's a hugely important game for Manchester United. And although it's massively unrealistic, winning the Champions League is Man United's best chance of the silverware that we want this season. Because Mourinho now, he's won the Europa League, he's won the League Cup, we won the, league, the FA Cup under Louis van Gaal. It's the Premier League and the Champions League that have eluded us. They're the ones that United fans want to win. And the Premier League seems out of reach now, with Man City flying so high on a completely different level and Liverpool not too far behind them. But the Champions League last year was where Mourinho lost so much of his support. Sevilla were two games, I was at the away game, it was tragic nil-nil, I think they had one shot on target. And then we got beaten at home comfortably by Sevilla. Now, I always saw Mourinho as a European elite manager in that he just knew how to win two-legged European ties. Now, that veil slipped last year against Sevilla. But we can't do it again this year against Valencia. Because if United come out of this December crazy fixture pileup with losses to Arsenal, who we also play, Liverpool and Valencia, and we get knocked out of the Champions League, there's going to be so many more calls for Mourinho to be sacked as United manager. But come out of this period of 11 games with, say, wins over Liverpool and Arsenal and Valencia and Young Boys through to the Champions League knockouts, beat our bitter rivals in Liverpool and Arsenal as well, Man United can head into 2019 with a completely different type of momentum than what has happened eight weeks ago. And then you've got the January transfer window where, you know, one or two maybe key signings and a bit of momentum behind us could see a different United turn up in the second half of this season because the first half has largely been forgetful. Let's be honest, it really, really has. Apart from a couple of results and performances, we can just put it to one side. But 2019 could offer United a different chance, a new opportunity to really turn the screw. And it needs to happen, it really does. And this is where it's going to happen for Mourinho. So for me, it's do or die for Mourinho now. You've got 11 games here. We've got Liverpool away. We've got Arsenal at home as well, just for good measure. But those games against Valencia and Liverpool are the two clinchers for me. If we can beat Liverpool and beat Valencia, get through to the Champions League knockout stages and just get the momentum from beating Liverpool, who's to say that United can't then sign one or two key players, like I've just said there, and head into 2019 a much better, more confident look inside under a manager who maybe is starting to get it right. Now, lots of you still lambast me for trying to support Mourinho, but I want to see my manager succeed at my football club. It's as simple as that. And until Mourinho is not manager of Manchester United, I'll always support him. It's as simple as that. Because I've seen enough in those six games from Chelsea, as I've said, to still stand by him. If we were shit in all six of those games, I think it would have been inevitable he would have been sacked and he would have deserved it at that point. But we started to turn it around. Don't let the losses against Juve and Man City convince you that it's all fucking doom and gloom because it isn't. But these 11 fixtures, with some very winnable ones in there, you know, Cardiff, Huddersfield, we beat Bournemouth. That was tough though. United need to get the right results. And if we do and we head into 2019 with the right results behind us, come on. You've got to be a little bit born positive, surely. But let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Does it matter? Do you still think that nah, everything is going to stay level and flat until Mourinho is not Manchester United manager? Or do you think that if with the right results and the right performances and maybe the right signing in January, that we could turn it around in the second half of the season? And who knows what could happen? But let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV. Take it easy.